Hi everyone, welcome to Pharmacy Pearls. It's Friday, April 3rd, 2020, and today I'm gonna to take you through the preliminary evidence for treating COVID-19 infection with hydroxychloroquine. First of all, hydroxychloroquine or Plaquenil is classified as an antimalarial drug. In clinical practice, I most commonly see it used to treat either lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, but it does have antiviral and anti-inflammatory activity. Azithromycin, on the other hand, is a macrolide antibiotic commonly prescribed to treat infections of the respiratory tract. Its usefulness in the case of COVID-19 infection stems from its ability to prevent against bacterial superinfection. The first study examining the effects of hydroxychloroquine was a non-blinded, randomized trial conducted in China involving 30 hospital inpatients whose mean age was 48. In the study, all patients were given conventional treatments such as supportive care measures and one group also received hydroxychloroquine at a dose of 400 milligrams daily for five days. After seven days, researchers performed a nasopharyngeal swab to determine whether or not the virus could be detected. In the control group, 14 out of 15 patients, or 93%, tested negative for the virus, whereas in the hydroxychloroquine group, 13 out of 15, or 87% of patients, tested negative. Researchers also documented side effects, examples of which included bouts of diarrhea or cases of elevated liver enzymes. In the control group, 3 out of 15 patients experienced side effects, whereas 4 out of 15 complained of side effects in the hydroxychloroquine group. Fortunately, in this study, all patients survived, and the median time for disappearance of fever was one day in each group. Bottom line, in this first trial, hydroxychloroquine showed no effect on either viral or clinical outcomes. The second trial was a non-randomized study conducted in France involving 42 hospital inpatients whose mean age was 45. In this study, the dose of hydroxychloroquine was 200 milligrams three times a day for 10 days. Physicians also had the option, based on their clinical judgment, of prescribing azithromycin in order to prevent bacterial superinfection. The azithromycin was given at a dose of 500 milligrams on day one and then 250 milligrams for days two through five. Once again, the primary endpoint was the number of patients with a negative nasopharyngeal swab, and this was tested on day three and day six. In the control group, 1 out of 16 patients tested negative by day 3, and 2 out of 16 tested negative by day 6. On the other hand, in the hydroxychloroquine group, 5 out of 14 patients tested negative on day 3, and 8 out of 14 tested negative on day 6. Interestingly, of the patients given both hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin, 5 out of 6 patients tested negative at day 3, and 6 out of 6, or 100% of patients, tested negative at day 6. There were several important limitations with this study. First of all, 6 of the hydroxychloroquine patients were lost to follow-up and not included in the data. This included 1 patient who died and 3 patients who were transferred to critical care. Next, a negative nasopharyngeal swab is a good sign, but it's a surrogate endpoint. Unfortunately, the trial didn't report any clinical outcomes or adverse effects. For example, it would be nice to know if the patients treated with hydroxychloroquine experienced fewer symptoms, such as coughing or shortness <coughs> of breath, or saw improvements on pulmonary function testing not seen in the control group. At the end of the day, it's a challenge to apply this early data, especially when we're in desperate need of treatment options and hope. With that being said, unless and until hydroxychloroquine can be shown to provide clinical or symptomatic benefits in hospitalized patients, it's unlikely to benefit the general population. Fortunately, you can rest assured that researchers are relentlessly pursuing this avenue as there are at least 23 other studies examining the usefulness of hydroxychloroquine currently in progress. 
And remember, these studies focus on hydroxychloroquine as a treatment option for COVID-19 infection. There are no published studies evaluating it as a prophylactic or a preventative measure. And finally, the combination of hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin is not without risks, as both medications are known to prolong the QT interval, increasing a person's risk for life-threatening cardiac arrhythmias and the possibility of sudden cardiac death. This episode of Pharmacy Pearls was brought to you by Skillshare, where one membership gets you access to over 20,000 classes, learn a new skill, and get two months free by visiting pharmacypearls.com slash Skillshare.